Chapter 3 Living Buddha Chao Luo Ming sits cross-legged on the edge of a cliff, dry and lonely. Following the gray-blue wind, his eyes drifted toward the western horizon. He is silently waiting for the sun to sink towards the horizon to start the sunset. Very habitual meditation, and behind him is the beautiful, pure white pagoda. On the western horizon hangs a deep, jet black. Clouds, the adiosphere settled in that thick cloud, like a extinguished ideals. The desolate horizon of purple-black rocks. Between the line and the leaden bottom of the low-hanging clouds, a narrow, long pale green sky. That light green sky looks extra special. Bright and profound, the wisps of silver-like mist seem to be. The graceful and dazzling sadness in the bright and profound artistic conception. Chao Luoming felt that his sense of life had never been as strong as it is now. So weak, just like a dry and cracked gray fog is silently falling into the deep valley. And what appeared in his soul was not abundant. Filled with nothingness, but empty and desolate death without a trace of echo. Lonely. Only General Tigus, who Cessna handed over to him this morning, returned. The words and sentences in the letter like wisps of burning clouds, emerged from his desolate and dead. Floating in the soul. After much deliberation, I cannot promise to replace you. Look for that sorrowful and beautiful fate. Although, your letter. The fate described in the book moved me deeply, and I also. You know, asking me to take over for you to find that destiny is the destiny of your life. Finally, however, I still have to refuse you. Because, to agree to your request, first of all, we need to understand the essence of life proclaimed by Buddhism. Body, that is, the belief in pure emptiness. However, I cannot. That kind of emptiness is regarded as the destination of life. The emptiness of Buddhism is through emotion. Emotional self-withering is the artistic conception achieved by self-withering. That might be true. Reality is a kind of reality of life, but it is not beautiful, it cannot make me feel. Moved, I have never been persuaded, but only moved. In my opinion. Come, the truth that is achieved through emotional self-mutilation is pale. Yes, ugly. In my philosophical vision, only passion is the essence of life. Ontology. When I look back on my life, what I see is a desert. In the cool wilderness, those rationalities that once seemed extremely solid and real. Those desires that were once so rich and moving are like weeds in late autumn. As withered, and the yellow grass in the ruins of time. It seems to have disappeared into the gray mist-like nothingness, with only a few wisps of flame. Crimson emotions make me feel that I have truly lived, that I. Once had a blazing, real life like a flame. Only. When life is gone, those few strands of emotion can be turned into nothingness, but that. It must be the dark red nothingness. The essence of life is not those desires and emotions polluted by physical instincts. That small emotion is nothing but. The snowfield stained by the dog's paw is black in the shadow of the physical property. Flowers are the withered sunshine in the hearts of mediocre people who lack poetry. Only. The rock-like sorrow that will not be cracked by the thousand-year wind, only. There is the joy that is as gorgeous as the sunset that turns the boundless snow field into crimson. Laughter, only the love forged with hard flames, only the brilliant. Faith that rots like a golden sun, only by transcending survival rationality and material. The passion of sexual instinct only prefers to shatter life and death. The passion that does not change the original intention is the essence of life. Not all people can live in the sense of life ontology. Living and dying. Those who only know how to follow the guidance of reason and pursue dust. A person who is interested in the survival of the world is a false person because, to survive, interests, they never dare to laugh or cry truly, they can only be affected by an external authority that determines their earthly interests. The basic point of do, those who only know how to obey the instinctive desire for materiality and enjoy. 
The so-called life person is humble and dirty because there is no real. The physical instinct sublimated in the real emotion, the mating with the pig and the dog is in the trial. There is no difference in the aesthetic sense. Only by transcending reason and bringing instinct. It is the aesthetic passion cast into poetry that makes women's eyes sway. It makes the man's eyes wild-like. Wildfire on the prairie, brilliant like the sun bathed in the snowy river. Only in passion can there be beauty and freedom. Passion is beauty and freedom. The only source of freedom. Because reason and instinct are both hosts. Fate is the destiny prescribed by nature. The reason is wisdom in nature. And an understanding of the laws of existence in earthly politics, instinct is the natural. A vulgar life intuition of the rules of survival, only in the fate. There are external orders, but no freedom of life, only rules and no. Poetry has no beauty. Emotion, or passion, is something that belongs only to live. The privilege of life, life can transcend the rules of nature with passion, and become. For the artistic conception of freedom above fate, the pursuit of beauty is also. Emotional love, life depends on understanding, appreciation, and creation. The ability to create beauty in life becomes freedom. I know that life can only return to nothingness in the end. Meaning, nothingness as the destination of life is an inescapable fate. Reality. It is for this reason that I despise the kind of people who can survive. What they pursue desperately all their lives is to be. The existence of the physical nature is erased by nothingness. Their existence is nothing but fates. Cowardly struggles and ugly squirms. They are not capable and will, with noble emotion, reveals the meaning of life before the nothingness of fate. Beauty and freedom. At the same time, precisely because nothingness is the reality of fate, I. It is confirmed that passion is the meaning of life. Truth is not the same as beauty. In other words, the truth of fate is not consistent with the beauty of life. Imaginary. Nothing is meaningless, and emotion is the creator of beauty and therefore meaning. The creator of righteousness, beauty is the meaning of life itself. Life. Only broken in passion can give nothingness the lust of meaning. Only red can show the beauty of life and the reality of fate, I. Unwilling to flower the emotions in the way of meditation that you write about. After withering, to obtain pure white emptiness, I only hope that passion will have a day. Can tear my soul like a wolf in the bloody woods, let my life. Blood splashed on the void. I think that is the only way to be able to. Find the meaning of life and the oasis of beauty in the real nothingness, no. Otherwise, that kind of reality would be too gloomy and heavy. The hotter the passion, the deeper the pain with passion as. For the ontology of life, it is a philosophy of pain, but the pain is. Beautiful as a flower, the pure white emptiness of Buddhism is the tranquility without pain. Philosophy, but that tranquility is too pale, too lacking in beauty. The sensation cannot make the hard, burning male heart embrace it, so. So, I chose beauty. Of course, I also chose pain, even if it hurts. Bitterness breaks my heart. I cannot accept your entrustment, also because I do not believe in. Come back, I don't believe that beautiful souls like God Amelin and Newton will be reincarnated. Back. Reincarnation is the fate of things, and the nature of things exists forever in reincarnation. However, there is no real inspiration for life in eternal existence, no. Beauty has no poetry, only the rules of fate. Passion never disdains. Reincarnation, because passion is poetry that transcends physical fate, he. The meaning is to create momentary beauty on top of eternal reincarnation thus making nothingness a burning artistic conception. Of course, the beauty of life is difficult. She often needs to bid farewell to existence with pride. Just like God Amelin and Newton. The pursuit of the beauty of life, the pursuit of passion and freedom, one must give up the obsession with long-term existence, let go of. Give up yearning for eternity and be content with the glorious moment that 
moments dancing wildly in nothingness, all things can be reincarnated, and passion. Never reincarnate. Remember, I once saw a steep mountain. Collapse. After a magnificent collapse, the sheer beauty of the mountain. Gone forever, leaving only a desolate sky. Gadam. The same is true of Lynn and Newton's lives. Disappeared in passion, turned into the horseman's horse on the windswept prairie. Songs turned into the charm of Mongolian beauties dancing, but they will never. Will regenerate in a reincarnation way. This is the same as the philosophy embodied in the destiny of Mongolia. Learning is the same the incomparable splendor that only pursues the moment. Philosophy of Beauty The history of Mongolian heroes gushing from the golden sun. Poetry, after shocking the world with its masculine splendor, was soon. Disappeared for a while. Because he disdains to exist for a long time, he does not. The pursuit of eternity, but with the soul-stirring moment in the blue sky of history. The majestic beauty is engraved on the dome, the kind of gold that only noble beasts. The dazzling beauty that can only be understood by ordinary minds. The tragedy of Mongolia's fate is only that the Mongolian nation did not. The brilliance of that historical moment completely enters the emptiness of the red eye. Thus making today's Mongolian nation an object of humiliation. I live. The purpose is only to use the passion that belongs to the storm in the on the purple sunset, engrave the fate of Mongolia with that heroic epic. The epitaph is called, just to use my blood to write the fate of Mongolia. Write a requiem that can make the setting sun shed deep red tears. I'm not a tongue-tied person, and today, I wrote this. Talking too much is out of guilt towards you. You know, refuse to live. The last entrustment of life is difficult, and it is difficult for me to refuse such a person as you. The entrustment of the respected elders is even more difficult. In your letter, say, if there's no one to take your place, keep looking for that showy and pathetic. Fate, your soul will not be able to enter the white emptiness, it will be. Turned into a wisp of sad wind, forever in the increasingly desolate inner Mongolia. The plateau is wandering here and there, with all due respect, you are not reincarnated. You will not materialize into the wind because you also have a heart full of blood and tears. Soul, a soul with emotions like green fields. Otherwise, you won't. We searched hard for fate. Of course, I know you will. Step into nothingness with regret. I think, the fate of the Mongolian nation. All true Mongol. No one can get rid of that regret. Perhaps, only by hugging Zhuo. The hot, heavy sunset dies, and that regret turns to purple ning. Quiet. The aliosphere has emerged from the base of that black cloud in the western sky. Revealed, began to sink toward the barbaric horizon. That day ball red. Like a great, heavy star dripping from deep black melancholy. Dense blood beads. The vast and turbulent mood made it difficult for Chao Luo Ming to Enter a state of thoughtless meditation. This uneasiness is not so many tedious. The refusal of his entrustment arose, rather, from tedious. The negation of the cycle of life in the letter is more accurate. Chao Luo Ming faint sense. Yes, tedious's reasons for denying reincarnation are moving, the touching part. It does not lie in the clarity of logic, but in the beauty of thought. But, yes. He could not accept Tiga's point of view, because, if not, if reincarnation is fixed, then he has been seeking that pathos for decades. And the efforts of the gorgeous fate have become extremely stupid. More order. Chao Luomeng was disturbed that Tiga's letter of reds. Nothingness. Chao Luomeng felt that the artistic conception seemed to be better than Buddha's. The pure emptiness of learning is more attractive. He tried so hard to erase it. A feeling, but can't succeed. Chao Luoming knows that if you fall in love with. If he lost the artistic conception of Yin Hong's nothingness, it means that he is far away from the Buddha. Learning means that his whole life is a time as irrelevant as time. Undo the error. 
This made Solomon somewhat regret seeing Tejas. Believe it. In the late 1930s, Kalaman and Tejas got acquainted. That. It was dusk, and Chu Luoming found that Tejas was covered in blood. Passed out in front of the Inbu Jiaomiao Pagoda. Tejas were with the Japanese army. The team became scarred in the fierce battle. Kalaman Bategu. See it in Zhao Temple and used herbs to heal his wounds. After recovery, Tegu. When Si said goodbye to Chao Luo Ming, he suddenly asked, if a Japanese. Someone is injured, will you save him? Yes, I am a Buddha who saves all sentient beings. Chao Luo Ming replied calmly. Answered, but lowered his gaze. He felt unable to face up to Jaguzina. A pair of deep black flint eyes. Only Yin Hong's kindness is beautiful. Chao Luo Ming remembered. So Tiji said, remember the pair of deep eyes when he said it. Black eyes like flint struck by lightning, shining steel blue. Flames. Since then, every time Tigis passes by the Ergun River, the Imbos summoned the temple, and they all visited Chao Luo Ming. The 50s, T. Gus became a general of the Communist Party and left Erguna. River Basin Grasslands, however, he still often from Ho Hot. Send a letter to Chao Luo Ming. To find that fate this time, from the Ergun River to Hu. Gaoshan Zhao Temple in the northern suburbs of Hihat City, the journey of Relic Tu Zhao. Among them, Chao Luo Ming has long been accustomed to wandering around like the wind. Step, but become as heavy as a stone. This made him realize that he. Vitality is about to disappear. So, came to the relic map to call. Later, Chao Luo Ming wrote to General Tigus who lived in Ho Hot. A letter asking Tigus to take his place and continue the search for the haunted. Fate of his soul. He felt that as long as Tigus agreed to his request, his life can be peacefully dissolved in the white emptiness. Middle. However, Tigus's reply not only disappointed him but also made him even more uneasy. The solar sphere has sunk on the horizon and Chao Luomim's sense of life. Weak as a dark gray sigh about to drift away, Tegu. The sentences in C's letter are also like clouds floating toward the horizon, becoming less and less clear. Clear, gradually disappearing into a paleness, it is pale like dry bones. Pale, as pale as the skin of a corpse. Oh, this paleness at the end of my life, so simple. Tune is too gloomy. Chao Luo Ming thought vaguely, and. And I tried my best to look at the setting sun as if to let the purple sun. The ball will dye the paleness floating on the edge of his life with a little light. Red. At this time, he discovered that a series of silver snake-like lightning bolts. Swimming among the thick clouds above the setting Sunday sudden. Suddenly, dazzling lightning flew vertically from the top of the cloud. Down, it seems to split the huge sunset. Time space as if. Congealed, the sharp thunders that passed vertically in the middle of the setting sun. Electricity, like light blue scars carved on the purple aliosphere. Chao Luo Ming suddenly heard the wind blowing up from the cliff. Loud wildly in his ears, the sound of the wind with life like a raging wave. Feelings flooded into his soul. O oh, great wheel of samsara. You finally brought that gorgeous fate into my sight. Wild. Chao Luo Ming looked at the sunset split by the flying thunder and lightning, and his heart. Thought in shock. He seemed to see the scene decades ago approaching again. Elephant, the young man crossed the broken road at the moment when his head was about to be cut off. The piercing gaze cast upon him by the shattered blood mist, the youth's dark purple. On the eyes like the setting sun, there is a crazy and steep scar like a crack. Of pathos. Chao Luo Ming lowered his gaze, turning his head slowly and with difficulty. Skull, looking behind. One firmly stepped on the stone steps at the base of the pagoda. The boots on his back appeared in his sight, pale yellow Mongolian long. The hem of the robe, like a blazing sun on the side of the black boot, fluttered. 
Chao Luoming slowly moved his dignified gaze upwards. He looked. Reached the tough waist like a male wolf, saw the broad. With both shoulders, I saw the straight neck like a cliff. Chao Luoming's gaze. It shook violently and stopped on the neck. He is too familiar with this. It's a body now, and this is the one who leaned against the back in late autumn decades ago. The headless Mongolian youth standing on the cliff of the Ergun River under the poplar tree. Body. Chao Luomang's eyes moved upward again with difficulty. He saw a pair of leopard-like eyes. In the glow of sunset. Underneath, those eyes showed a dark purple like a burning sunset, and the arrogant mood with a hint of madness, like a sharp thunderbolt. The depths of the eyes flicker. Oh, I found you at last, my red lily. Chao Luoming murmured silently to himself, the distant and boundless tiredness. A gray field of snow stretched across his soul. He suddenly felt. Well, time is meaningless, spent in persistent pursuit. Decades instantly turned into a drop of hard tears, a drop in the. The tears never flowed from his dry heart. Players of the Inner Mongolia University polo team and girls from the art department. They, the white marble-paved mountain outside the gate of the Sheraton Temple. On both sides of the road, two camping tents were erected. Cessna. Unnecessarily inspecting the tent already fastened to a pine tree. Rope sideways to the edge of the cliff. Where her gaze wanders. Square. Jella raised her thin face slightly, her sharp eyes flashed. Shining masculine glamour, staring obsessively at the high pedestal. The tower body of the stupa. In the crimson sunset, the curves are graceful. Rose-colored light waves flowed from the pagoda, just like a woman who just came from. The Mongolian beauty bathed in the light blue snow water river is a bright and white. Body. Cessna looked at Gera sadly, and suddenly felt that the only way to attracting the gaze of Galana's radiant and masculine gaze, she beauty is meaningful. In a rush of ecstasy. In the middle, Cessna even wanted to completely expose her body as white as jade. Body on the white altar-like base of the stupa for the thunderbolt on the horizon. The electric splitting sunset is a dance of sacrificial offerings. At that moment, Cessna saw him sitting cross-legged on the edge of the cliff. The Tolku Chao Luoming on the top slowly turned his dry face backward. Allow. Then, she was surprised to find that Gera was looking at Tide Laman. After a while, it was like seeing a distant charm. Yes, a mighty and desolate tenderness welled up in his eyes. Cessna. She felt that at this moment, Jella's eyes were so gentle that she felt distressed. Jella lowered his eyes as if avoiding something and walked away from the stupa. Opened. And this puzzled Cessna. Before, she was from. Gera's eyes only saw that even in the impact of Shueliang's knife light. If you look down, it will only burst out the coldness of the flame. Of course, occasionally you will see. I have been in pain, but that pain is also as hard as a bronze-colored rock. Only she never saw the sad tenderness in Gera's eyes. Moreover, when Gera looked at others, he never looked down first. He cast a haughty gaze. What makes him gentle, the eyes of the living Buddha Chao Luoming. What's in the eyes? This question is like a ray of burning wind, from the color. Sina's heart skipped a beat. Pale, she ran quickly until she had just stood up. In front of Chao Luoming, who came. Although Cessna knew it was rude. Yes, however, she still eagerly approached Chao Luoming's eyes. Take a deep look. Father is indeed wrong, there is not a. It is not a piece of spring, but a desolate autumn, so desolate. Seth. Nasid in a daze, her voice trembling like the wounded wing of a wild dove. But what makes the beast gentle? Yes, there is only an autumn wasteland in my eyes. It is the wilderness of autumn that makes him gentle because there was once. Live the last vestiges of a fate. 
Chao Luo Ming whispered dryly. The sound was like a dry flame. He avoided Cessna's. Watching and looking west. Cessna also followed Chao Luo Ming's gaze to the west. She looks. Suddenly, another thunderbolt flew vertically from the top of the towering clouds. And down, cleaving sharp rifts in the purple sunset. Cessna. His eyes moved rapidly as if he was in severe pain from the scar. Swing up. She found that the crack like thunder and lightning on the setting sun were at the same time. The grim and frantic emotion that flitted deep in Gera's eyes while he drank the spirits. The tone is so similar. At the same time, she realizes sadly that she will never. It is far from being able to truly kiss the beauty passing by in the setting sun with beautiful red lips. Light blue thunder and lightning, because the horizon can only be far away from her forever. Presented in the gaze. Perhaps, only after death can my soul become. The birch forest in the sky is the sharp crack in the purple sunset. Add a dash of greenery. Cessna's shoulders drooped feebly. Come, looking at the western horizon, thinking sadly. She didn't even. Notice that Chao Luo Ming had already left. Chao Luo Ming walked into the main entrance of Shelly Tujiao. Gera is watching. In the courtyard, there is an ancient pine with twisted and coiled branches like a red-scaled python. Chao Luo Ming walked slowly to Jela's side, trying his best to make his tone appear calm. Quietly said, can you tell me, what is your name? Just now, I was looking at Chao Luo Ming's living Buddha next to the stupa on the cliff. At that time, Jela appeared pale green in the slanting rays of the sun from the living Buddha. In the colored eyes, I felt a kind of bitterness and sweetness that I had never experienced before. Sorrow. The pale green eyes of the living Buddha made Gera feel that he... It seems to be facing a grassland that is withering in the desolate autumn wind. And for some reason, he had an impulse to move, wanting to wash away the withered prairie with tears like a torrent of red. Desolate, lonely mood. At that time, Gareth could not stay with the tide for long. Laman looked at each other, otherwise, his tears would be on the alfalfa colored. Floating in the sunset, he is unwilling to cry in front of others. But, yes, at this moment in the shadow of the high temple, Chao Luomeng's eyes became. It turned silver-gray, like a piece of cool moonlight. So, Gera. He returned to his usual stern and haughty demeanor, staring directly at Ushio. Laman said his name. You must be twenty-two, because my red lily. It withered twenty-two years ago. Chao Luomeng said hoarsely. The sound was like a cracked wind blowing from the depths of time far away. Yes, twenty-two years old, Gera replied curtly, seeming. Some excitement. But he's not because this guy has never met him before. The old man was surprised to be able to tell his age accurately, but was surprised. He felt that there was something in Chao Luomeng's difficult tone that made him want to be excited. Something to hug. Tomorrow afternoon, I will wait for you in the hall. Today, I. Too tired. After Chao Luoming finished speaking, he walked towards the monk's room where he lived next to him. Go. He did not leave Gera because of fatigue, but. Because at this moment he could not face Gera calmly, and at the same time, he. I feel that an old man who is nearly a hundred years old, a Buddhist believer. It would be ridiculous if it seemed passionate and turbulent. In the afternoon of the second day, Jella walked into the Sherida Temple alone. Of the main hall. On the altar in the middle of the main hall, there are enshrined statues representing the past. Three tall white marble Buddha statues of the present and future. Wisp. The hazy smile is like a mist floating on the Buddha statue, which is as full as a full moon. On the face, however, the hazy smile emerged. It creates a quiet and nihilistic atmosphere, making people feel that the past and present of time. 
Both the present and the future are melted in that faint smile. Living Buddha Chao Luo Ming led Jella through a door on the side of the main hall. The low and heavy red pine door leads into a mysterious side hall. Partial. The hall is rectangular, and there are no windows on the walls covered with gold leaf. The light yellow curtain hanging from the ceiling several meters high covers the the front altar. The apricot yellow flames of several butter lamps followed. Gara's footsteps swayed soundlessly, making the gold leaf covered walls and giants. Dignified light waves flickered on the large curtain. The whole temple seems to be buried. A burial chamber containing an ancient golden remnant of time. The living Buddha Chao Luo Ming gestured with his eyes to Jella on a yellow silk face. He sat down on the circular cushion and then, facing Gera himself, crossed. Kneeled on another cushion beside the curtain and hung the slack. Eyelids. Chao Luo Ming was silent for a long time, facing this he looked for. A soul that has lived for decades, I don't know what to say for a while. He seems to only want to merge with this soul in silence? Suddenly, from the depths of his mind, from the ruins of that time, a desolate singing sound floated. Chao Luo Ming discerned carefully. He found that it was his father who had been with him through his youth. The voice of a troubadour on the prairie. Over half a century of enlightenment. In the process of teaching Buddhism, he has long forgotten the sad singing. However, at this moment, the chant full of time and dust is so. It echoed clearly in his silent soul. Oh, let the chant speak to my red lily. Perhaps, this is destiny. Chao Luo Ming thought so. Yes, in the heavy golden silence of the temple, Cholo Mingto. A long, crooning voice, like a dry and cracked. Crimson blood splattered. Our Mongolian plateau, the home of the bronze-colored sun. This plateau in the northeast of Eurasia is formed by waves from the sea. Rising from the waves, it stands like a holy altar in the vast clouds. This is a most beautiful land, that white feather grass, that blue and white. Snowy river, the birch forest with silver poles, the grass rushing to the sky. The waves, the boundless snow field where the evening glow falls, the gray-blue wind. The wildflowers in full bloom in the middle are looking forward to a great destiny. Can. This plateau has been neglected by human civilization for a long time. Aegean. The goddess of beauty has long been bred in the blue waves. The Nile has already risen. Pyramids yearning for eternity. The mainland dances on the corpses in the funeral pyre. Prince Fan Jing has long since. Under the snow peaks of the Himalayas, I realized the pure white emptiness. People have already expressed their ideals of life with the great wall that stretches thousands of miles. Solution, in the desert of the Arabian Peninsula, a new bend has already risen. Month, but this plateau is still desolate, only. The lonely sun kisses her beautiful desolation in the wind, snow, and thunder. Because. Because she is too proud, too cold, and only the most resolute and courageous. Only race is worthy of appreciating her beauty. She also only expects the most male. A glorious fate named her. Oh, in the millennium's expectation. In the midst of this, the rocks on the top of the mountain are all broken. The chanting voice from Chao Luomeng's mouth was like a ray of tiredness. The wind hung down its gray wings feebly. At the same time, he pulls. A rope hanging from the pale yellow curtain in front of the altar. That huge. The curtain swayed and parted like a cracked golden sun. Light. Gera sees the base of the altar in fuchsia granite. Above, presents a group of bronze statues, a male bull with protruding muscles. Squatting on his hind legs, his two front legs are straight, supporting the full. The huge body with a sense of wild power, the majestic head of the copper bull with violet. Throwing up into the air, staring with ruby-studded eyes. The dark purple sunset was like dripping blood, 
the two sharp horns of the copper bull, curved to form a circle as engraved in golden time. The wheel of fate. Under the bull lies the naked body of a young girl. Body. The girl's long hair hangs down like a burning torrent. On the beautiful face turned to one side, there are condensed mad pain and blazing. The demeanor of overlapping intense love, the slightly parted lips resemble. It is about to indulge in kisses, or it seems to be letting out a shrill cry. Call sign, only Mongolian girls have phoenix-like long eyes inlaid with. Touching the sapphire, the swaying crystal blue light waves are like heavy. The shadow of tears, one arm of the maiden raised and grasped the bull's shoulder. Scapula, slender fingers sinking into the rocky muscles of the bull, as if. Is desperately pushing against the bull, but the other arm seems to be broken. Falling feebly like a flowering branch, it is full of abundant erotic. The beautiful breasts thrust upwards with a sacrificial and holy passion. And the loins of the maiden are like silver serpents on fire. Twisted in a state of extreme pain, but the smooth belly shows. The sense of serenity is rich and coquettish, like the snow looking forward to the crimson sunset. Yuan, the girl's thighs were separated to the two sides as if dislocated, beautiful and plump. Rao's buttocks lifted upwards with an almost insane desire, making. Her pussy, as gorgeous as a purple wildflower in full bloom, faces the copper bull. The majestic male genitalia behind the lower abdomen. Gera's bronze eyes trembled violently, and his heart. The girl under the copper bowl is intertwined with blazing pain and eroticism. The posture was strongly shocked. At this moment, he heard Coloman again. Chanting voice. However, Chao Luomeng still felt that it was not. Not his voice's soul, a quivering gray. Fog, listening to the bard that has already turned into dry bones with Gera. Artists chant. The figures of some tribes also appeared in the desolate sky of the plateau. Side, however, hastily disappeared on the horizon in the turbulent. In the weeds. Because their will is not strong enough, there. Characters are not violent enough, they are not yet able to make beauty with male pride. The beautiful plateau hangs its head. Many years have passed, and the Ergun River. A fierce tribe emerged from the silvery waves. But this department. A branch of the tribe also withdrew from the plateau at last, in the beautiful Koryo Peninsula. In the scenery, they degenerate from heroic males to gentle oriental. The image of a beautiful woman. Another member of this tribe that emerged from the silvery waves. One died in the battle with the alien race, and only one. The girl fled to the depths of the plateau along the Ergun River. In the middle of nowhere. On the prairie, the girl meets the divine bull transformed from the soul of the setting sun. Three sons and two daughters were born. This is the ancestors of Mongolia. This is holiness. The creation of the Nairan tribe. The daughters of the Niloan tribe are born beautiful. The silver waves of the Ergun River shine in the long eyes like a colorful phoenix. The charm of the Niloan tribe, the men of the Niloan tribe are born brave, fighting with tigers and leopards. It is their wild pleasure, and Lord Genghis Khan is his. Our glorious sun. Scarlet thunder and lightning are engraved on the eyes of Mongolian boys. Out of a steep hill, the snow as beautiful as silver makes the face of a Mongolian man. Stern as iron, the grass waves rushing to the horizon in the golden wind, let Meng. The heart of the ancient man grows the wings of the storm longing for the distance. The emerald green birch forest lit by the setting sun on the line aroused the Mongolian. A man's desire to pursue male beauty in his unrestrained run. Holy Lord! Genghis Khan, with the blood of the Mongolian warriors as the flame, with the Mongolian. The bones of the ancient warriors split by the sword are used as hammers and in the golden Asahi. The epic of Mongolian heroes was cast in it. Since then, this plateau has the name resounding through thousands of miles of clouds and sky to Mongolia. It was to be a noble crown on the brow of the earth. Jilla straightened her upper body, knelt on the ground with one knee, solemnly revered, gazed at the altar. 
He felt at the purple granite of the altar. The base, like a chilling flame frozen for a thousand years, the male. The statues of bulls and maidens seem to be because the flame cannot melt, because... Sad that they cannot be reduced to white ashes in the red burning. Sorrow, the chant-like voice of Holomung is like the crack in the sorrow. Lots of scars. The Mongol heroic epic leaves nothing in the world. Only the boundless ruins crushed by the iron hooves of war horses became his symbol. But the epic, with bloody blades, on the golden sun, carved the image of handsome and beautiful Mongolian warriors that is brilliant. The masculine beauty, which is the image of the soul of the sun, belongs to the east. Fon's god of beauty is the masculine acme of the beauty of life. As long as two. If the sun does not wither, the oriental goddess of beauty engraved on the sun will last for thousands of years. Not wither, the beast-like haughty eyes of the Mongolian warriors will last forever. Overlook the world from the golden aliosphere. But, the history of Mongolian heroes. Poetry has long since disappeared, and the grassland has become desolate again, desolately. Like a cemetery where a hero's will is buried, the fate of Mongolia is like a long road. The long and lonely path still twists and turns in desolation. Maybe. It is because of the lack of a grand funeral to match the splendor of the epic that makes Ming. Ancient fate cannot disappear in the sky, perhaps the Mongolian heroic epic once. Submerge the world in a magnificent sea of blood and this magnificent crime. The fate of sinful Mongolia can only be purified by the burning of the fire. Change. O oh, Mongols, do you know the glorious funeral? It is necessary to sacrifice the iron bones of the man and the beauty of the daughter, make fate. The purifying fire that proudly disappears into the blue sky needs a broken heart. The blood spattered from the heart to ignite. Gera's mournful howl suddenly interrupted Shuriman's voice. The sound of Chao Luoming felt that he seemed to have heard the cries of the male leopard. Whistling. He remembered that just twenty-two years ago the red lily withered. At that moment, he saw a golden prairie leopard squatting in Ergun. On a hill next to the steep bank of the river, I gazed at the sunset obsessively. When? As the sun sank below the horizon, the male leopard uttered this. With a mournful whistling, he ran frantically to the horizon, as if he was going to. Chase the purple sunset. At that moment, the western sky was dark. Red, like a wildfire, ignited. The troubadours chant that echoes in Kalaman's soul. Broken into a misty blood mist amidst the howling sound of Gera, the blood mist. After dissipating, Chao Luomeng's soul became lonely and pale again. Thus, he entered a state of thoughtless meditation. Gradually, in the empty. In the silent meditation, a flame emerged faintly. The flame started to be pale, slowly turning light red, and finally becoming like animal blood. In Hong. Oh, it's fire, only in a wildfire, that. Only the pathetic passion contained in fate can be purified into quiet emptiness. Wu Gala, the name means fire, this. The sudden thought woke up Chu Luoming from his meditation, he felt. Well, at last, he understood the fate he had been looking for for so many years. Meaning. Chao Luoming opened his eyes and found that Jella didn't know when. Has gone. Chao Luoming walked out of the temple and came to the gate of the Shrine of Shrine. Sighed. The sun has already sunk and the peaks of the Inchon Mountains appear in the twilight showing a wild black-blue color. Only been my peak covered with silver ice and snow. On the top of the peak, there is still a piece of light that slanted up from the horizon. The golden sun, which makes the steep peaks seem to float in the sky. A golden crown in the depths. A ray of light red flowing cloud is like the deep and long love affair of the Mongolian girl entwined enchantingly around the beautiful king. Crown. I should go back, go back to the Ergun River, wait. Wait for the wildfires to drift across the wastelands, all will be in the wildfires. Purified into pure white emptiness. Living Buddha Chao Luoming thought calmly. 
but amidst the calm, his thoughts were restlessly turbulent. Arise, will the wildfire, colored like blood, stay in the void? Under the red ashes? Is nothingness really what Titus envisioned? Like, is it bright red? Are those noble and beautiful destinies really? There is no reincarnation, and everything I have encountered is a coincidence. Fit. Chao Luoming tried his best to erase these doubts, but he felt. Well, these questions overlapped into a bright red shadow, seeping into his body. In the pursuit of pure whiteness and emptiness, 